Okay, so now let's learn about basics, uh, how we use CSS. Now, in order to use CSS, basically there are three different mechanisms of incorporating CSS within your HTML code. The first being in inline CSS, which basically means that you insert the CSS within the HTML code, within the HTML tag. The internal CSS is that you insert the CSS within your HTML page and then external CSS. That's the third form of CSS which is most commonly used, which means that you actually write the CSS code in a separate file and then incorporate that file's uh, link within your main HTML file. I will show you how you do that all uh, all these three basic mechanisms. So uh, let's go to our for example code. Now once you're here, this is a basic HTML code that we have written. Now as discussed previously, every CSS or uh, every HTML, sorry, has to have three basic things. HTML tag, head tag, body tag. Again, these are not mandatory things, but are recommended things as per HTML5 standard. Okay. So do ensure that you have this. The head tag basically incorporates the metadata. The body tag contains the actual data of your HTML content. The entire content of your web page basically goes inside this body tag. And the HTML tag basically defines that this is an HTML page. Now, let's just write something for here. In other words, we write an H1 tag. And let me just close that. And let's give it my first uh, CSS go page. Let me write that. Okay. And then I come back. Sorry. I come back here and give a paragraph tag. Now remember, paragraph is like a block. It auto always starts with a new line. So whenever we give a paragraph, it will automatically be on a new line. Um, so on the new line, I write welcome to my first C first of all, uh, first CSS page. Okay. So these two simple lines, I just save them. And if I go back into my uh, where I've saved it, if I remember them correctly, uh, these pages. And if I double click. So this is very simple output that we get. Okay, my first page and welcome to CSS. Nothing more, nothing less. There is no CSS involved in this particular code right now. Now internal CSS means that we incorporate the CSS within my HTML, and for that basically we come into my HTML page. Okay, now internal can be written in head tag or inline CSS basically is written within the tag. So there are two tags: inline CSS, internal CSS. First, let me talk about the inline CSS. Inline CSS means H1, we give here and we write the tab style, bracket start, bracket close, and in this we write, for example, color, this can be red. Now, this is a CSS tag. Okay, this is a simple inline CSS. This means that I have written a CSS code with my HTML tag. Similarly, if I go into paragraph tag, I can write style. Is equals to color can be for example let me just say blue okay B L U E becomes blue color I save this page go jump to my uh, page uh, and just refresh and you can see this that now this is red this is blue this is basically what is inline CSS means that now we are controlling the style of the text using C inline CSS this is CSS color is a CSS property red is a CSS value Style is this HTML attribute that defines that you are using an inline CSS. Style is basically an HTML inline um, HTML attribute. Okay, so this is HTML attribute defining the style, and within that style we have written a CSS code. So like I have said previously as well, CSS is basically a scripting language that works on HTML. HTML is an independent language. C++ independent, Java independent. These are languages that work on their own and they use their own API and code to work with that. However, CSS is a language that requires that you use something called HTML. It works in conjunction with HTML. It cannot operate individually. So if you say the CSS individually something, no. It requires HTML as the base and then based on that HTML, it works on its magic. Okay. So if you remove the HTML, there is no existence of CSS. So this is what basically we mean. It requires HTML tag and within that HTML tag, we have specified CSS styles. And now, obviously, I can specify more styles. So, in order to specify more styles, just use a semicolon. We use a semicolon, and then we can say, for example, text alignment is equal to center. Same thing I can do in this CSS as well. I also want this, or maybe I just leave it at this point. Okay. Uh, and uh, for example, I can control the text size, text properties, background color, foreground color. There are so many numerous attributes that we can associate. So, this becomes my CSS style. I've specified this as uh, center. And now, if I refresh this, and it now becomes a simple CSS image form. Okay, so uh, 
my first CSS becomes the basic setup that you want to do. This is called internal, uh, sorry, inline CSS. Internal CSS, we go for help. In order to use an internal CSS, that's the second form of using CSS, we go into our form and we specify here the basic code. Okay, uh, sorry, not this code. Okay, so now let's move to inter uh, internal CSS. For internal CSS, we go to head tag. Within my head tag, I specify a tag called style. Okay, and as soon as you write, the style is using, uh, coming up here, style type is equal to text slash CSS. Now, style basically means that uh, we are writing a tag. This is again an HTML tag that specifies that you are going to use a specific style based content. What is that content? We specify within type that it is a text slash CSS code. So from here, the browser will know that this is HTML tag. Within this HTML tag, we are going to provide a CSS code. Within this CSS code, basically now we specify our content. For example, I can write P, bracket start, bracket close, and then we can write color, okay, and then same thing, for example, red, okay. Now, here I have specified P as a selector. This again is the name of tag. This is not HTML tag. This is the name of the HTML tag on which this property would be applied on, okay. So, this is basically an HTML tag on which the our attribute would be or the property would be applied on okay so all the attributes all the tags that have basically paragraph would now be using the same properties that's the major advantage of css for example here we specified one paragraph but however what if we have multiple paragraphs so for example if i specify p here and i like lorem and then let me just backslash p and then go back here and insert another p and light another Loriam. Again, we talked about this in class as well. Loriam is basically a word that you write and you just press, uh, for example, um, okay, let me just write P here one more time and you spell write L O R E M Loriam and press tab and it just automatically fills with, with some garbage text so that we can do some testing uh, regularly. Okay, um, this would work in uh, what this uh, sublime version. Uh, the editor that I'm using, I don't know whether it would work in any other version or not. Just kind of check. So this is just a dummy text that we inserted very quickly. Now if you go back and hit refresh, see all the paragraphs are red except the first one. Now I come to it. See, uh, within my code now, I didn't specify any styles. I didn't specify any styles. I didn't specify any styles. I can have three paragraph texts. I can have 3000 paragraph texts. I can and would be, I can and now I would be basically able to control every single paragraph tag with just one CSS. Only one line of CSS is now controlling these entire attributes. This is the power of CSS that you do not need to specify attributes, settings, styles with every single tag. That's the major advantage. With HTML, you need to do that. If you are just using HTML for designing purpose, you would have to go into every single tag and specify attributes that control that tag. So if you have a thousand tags, you are dead. You know, it's just a nightmare. So what we do is we use CSS at the other end. What CSS allows us to do that you just put the content using your HTML that this is my paragraph, this is my paragraph, this is my paragraph. I might have a subheading. For example, I can write H2 here. Uh, this is this is subheading. Okay, and then I can backslash. So this is my another block level code. When we rewrite a block level code, automatically they would appear on the new line. So they automatically appear on the new line. I have another tag. Okay. Uh, now what happens is that all these attributes basically don't have any, uh, all these properties don't have anything, no CSS, but they are all being controlled using your CSS. This is inline C internal CSS. This is internal CSS using same single attribute I control. So for example, if I need to change the color, I said, I don't like this uh, red color. So what I need to do is I come into this red, go back here. I can say gray, for example, control S and cancel this. Let me go into my page, hit a refresh the entire text now becomes great. By just changing one word, I change the content of all the paragraphs. For example, there are 1000 paragraph tags in my single page. In order to change the color, you just need to change one word. Just change one word, the tag all are at automatically adjusted. That's the advantage of CSS. However, you still note that the first paragraph that we wrote is still blue color. That's because, uh, sorry, that's because this CSS uh, this is the first paragraph tag has what we call inline CSS because there is an inline CSS means we are controlling at a micro at a tag level this control has been specified that this particular tag needs to be of blue color no matter what other CSS might say 
in other words it has the highest precedence i will talk about this precedence let me compute the third form of css and we uh, do that okay so in this case i come here and then similarly i just specify h1 okay give it uh, h1 tag block start block close and then same thing i specify color here this can be red semicolon uh, text alignment i guess this can be center and this would work fine i can specify for example background color um in other words it can be for example gray okay let me use gray and semicolon control s this so make sure you save your file go back into your browser hit a refresh you would note that that now my red background and this changed okay uh, however the color here is red what if if i change the color again to blue okay control s so now my heading color in my css is blue with the center alignment or let me just give it a right alignment okay so so that i make a point right i just make it safe go back into my code and i hit refresh uh, why is it latin english uh, i don't know what's going on here oh, okay i have a plugin enable let me just disable that forget that so i have it blue it's right it's gray uh, it has a gray thing but the center alignment is still not working and the blue color is still not working okay so why is that still red it is center so if i come back here note that i have what we call inline css again inline css has higher precedence it has more control no matter what happens internal inline css would be the last thing to execute and would have most impact in other words right so uh, it's, it's like no matter what you write in your inline css uh, internal css inline css gets to execute in the last as the final decision so this is like the so moto decision that no matter what is in my css the final thing is it would be red with the center alignment so no matter what changes you make here they would have no effect over inline css because inline css has higher precedence so now if i remove h and let me just give it uh, the second tag this uh, h2 okay and let me just copy the css and come back here give this as h2 so again copy paste it is wonderful uh, saves a lot of time so i have written another css for h2 now again this is selector property this means that wherever you have written h2 these are the properties that would be applied on h2 so i save it go back into my browser hit a refresh now you would see this is blue on the right side with a gray background however this is still is not again because inline css has the highest precedence then comes the internal css or if i write it here inline has the highest precedence then comes the internal then comes the external right so in terms of execution this level, lowest level will always get executed right in inline css would be overridden by internal css right so this is basically what we refer to here so what has happened here is that h2 has a blue color right with a gray background however because in h1 we have written red and center in its inline this is most executed usually we prefer to use internal css or external css inline is where that uh, written used uh, at certain places where we need a specific control that no matter what the entire pattern of your website is this particular text has to be of a red color or this particular file heading has to be of a red color or has a different font or a different style maybe for a breaking news maybe for a notice board maybe for a some special purpose you want certain text to be different from the entire other content so we use inline css there other than that we usually prefer to use internal or most commonly used as an external because if you use inter inline like we've done here still this means that now you need to write this in every single tag so if you have 2000 pages in your website so it means that every h1 has to have that tag you know so you have to write the same code 2000 times at every single page what if you need to change it tomorrow or update the content or layout that means you have to go and change the every single page every single 2000 pages in every single page you have to go and change the h1 style so that's a nightmare right this is where we say that let's not use this here just write h1 tag for html to lay out the content to structure the content that how your content is supposed to be structured this is what html does this is the structuring of content the content is there the structuring is there the designing the look and feel is done through css the designing and the look and feel is done through css okay so once we do that we hit save we go back at browser and now everything is in the same perspective so now again if i need to bring the headings back into the center with a red color i come back here i just edit the setting so for example h1 i make it red again with respect to right i again write center okay 
control s come back here hit a refresh and now it's again back here so this means that if i have one page or 2000 pages just one change in css would make sure every pages are changed that's the beauty of it okay now the third type last type the third type third type basically means that you write your css in an external file it's called an external css this was in line css this is internal css again both within the same html page the third is external css so for that we create a new blank file we come here and we copy all this content again uh, it's much easier to copy paste rather than just type everything in manually for me at least again it will just take bore you off so what i do i write a paragraph same p tag color same h1 color same h2 and the settings now there is no style tag because we are going to save this as a css and css would know what we are doing so this is just a simple css okay then we go into file just click on save as and wherever you have saved your save your main css html page come here and i can say for example css style test dot css okay so this is the name i have given for my file css style test again we are just testing uh, and then uh, whatever name of your css is you just give that file name dot css and click on save dot css means this is now css file remember dot html was for html page okay every html page has to have an html extension but now we are saving this as a separate style sheet this style sheet would contain no html tags only css style for that purpose for that purpose sorry for that purpose now it needs css extension for css extension means now it's a css file system the browsers the network would now recognize this as your power cascading style sheet file so we save it and now you would see the colors are back again now it recognizes what you're doing now we go back to our html how do we incorporate styles here so i just remove this style tag and everything is back to normal now if i just press s save it go back to my html this was the previous look refresh everything goes back to default other than this one line because we have line used inline css here what happened because there is no css that's why it's now completely out of style simple pages are displayed so we go back to our code what we do now is inside a head tag we give our link tag so what we write is now we need to use a link and automatically the text appears again that's the beauty of using sublime it makes us even more lazy than we already are right so because it fills everything is in so perfect so once you write a link tag basically now what you need to do is what we've done is that we have an html page and we have a css page okay all my styles are in css all my content and data is in my html okay what we are trying to do is now we are trying to have one css control entire website rather than putting css in every single html page i have one css file that now would control all html files right so one css one for all one ring to rule them all if anybody knows that reference okay so it's a one ring to rule everybody one ring to rule entire web content using one css file we are able to control every single page how we do that we simply create an external css we link that css in every single page so every single page knows that you are using that single css file to control your content so how we do that we come into head tag we write a link tag we specify a relation rel for relation that it's a style sheet relation means the css you know css style sheet type again it's it, the type of this particular file is text slash css this is something we wrote in CS style tag as well and h reference hyperlink reference this hyperlink reference refers to that external file that is you going to use so i would be just entering the name css style style test dot css now remember this is a relative path means my file is exactly in the same folder where my original file is that is why i didn't specify any other location i just gave the name of this particular file so whatever name of this file is i just specify the name here you don't need to enter entire path if the file is saved in the same folder so for example if i go back into my folders and in this folder you would find this is a html file within the same html file i have a css file so i've saved both in the same directory because i've done that in my html code i have just given the file name this is called a relational path relation path means it doesn't contain the full path absolute path where c drive backslash java backslash html backslash css backslash and then you give the file name so the entire path is there i don't specify that in an apps relative path so once we give this relation path now what happens is that we create this file we come back in my code click on save my css styles are back now even though this html contains no css every tag has no css there is no internal css there is no inline css however within my head metadata i have specified a link attribute 
this means my HTML is linked with the second page. Okay, with the second file, that file contains CSS. Now, this single CSS file controls entire website. Page 1, page 2, page 3, page 4, page 5, page 2000. All the 2000 pages would have single CSS. In order to change the paragraph size, in order to change the paragraph color, in order to change the background, I only change this one CSS, one ring to rule them all. One CSS to control entire website. One CSS would change every single thing. This is the power of CSS. This makes the life of website designers a heaven. Because they control the entire website content from one single file, you write the CSS in one single file. Within the same CSS file, again the code is same. You write the tag name which you want to control, the tag name on which the attributes or properties are supposed to be applied, start the block, end the block. You specify the property name within that block. Give a semicolon. Then another prop, uh, selector name, tag name that you want to control. Block start, block close. Property names. Okay. We will discuss these property names in next classes as we start to do some tasks. So this becomes an easy way of controlling how basically your CSS is going to look. Okay. So we learn three basic ways of actually using CSS. Don't worry about these attributes. We will be doing that in next classes as well. For now, simply the uh, concept is that uh, CSS basically allows us to con design, control the look and feel. There are three basic ma means of using it, inline, internal and external. Inline has the highest precedence. For example, a tag may have inline CSS, may internal CSS, external CSS. No matter what you specify in external, inline, the in, uh, internal, the inline would have the maximum precedence. <clears throat> okay, so inline gets executed no matter what. Then there is an internal, then there is a CSS. So all these three, the inline CSS has the highest precedence, then internal CSS, then external CSS. So you can control the look and feel of individual page by specifying internal CSS. You can control the look and fall of inter in each individual tag by using inline CSS or you can control the entire content of your website using external CSS. So three mechanisms of doing it. In future classes, we would be doing individual tasks to understand various different ways of controlling your web content. This is Dr. Sean Buddy. Thank you very much for watching. If you are here for the first time, don't forget to subscribe my channel and hit that bell icon to receive these video lectures continuously. Thank you very much. See you around.